Hi, um, this is the next one in our how to play D&D for free. This is where we take a bunch of adventures uh, that are free or what I think are really, really great value. And um, we just throw them into the setting that we covered last week and um, which is Black Marsh. And we go from there. So this isn't a really carefully thought out episode. This is literally just me going over, grabbing a load of stuff, coming over here and just telling you how I'd stick it in to show you how you, you don't have to overthink stuff. So let's start, well, let's just start. Um, so I'm going to start with what would be maybe a fairy kind of woods type setting. And that the best one to start with that is the Black Apple Brew. This is by Kyle Hettinger. Sorry, oh, I forgot that wrong. Um, but this is an amazing adventure. It has an insane asylum. It has um, some kind of fairy-esque elves. And um, it's just cool. Now, if I jump over here, um, and it's free as well, this is one of the basic fantasy adventures, um, you could throw that anywhere in and around the Greywood. I would probably put it on the Never Eat East side, um, and you could kind of start turning the Greywood into this more um, heavily magic from the, the fallout of this mountain that fell, um, kind of mystical forest. Um, this would fit in there absolutely perfect. Then what I would say is um, you can start interacting with the villages around this side as well. There's, I think, the centaurs that are mentioned up there that are taking, which again fits that kind of vibe, um, that are taking cattle. And you could then start working towards another amazing free adventure, which is, I'm going to say this wrong, the Sepulchre of Seven. Um, let me jump screens here. Uh, bu -bu -bum. Yeah, the Sepulchre, yeah, that, the, the Thing of Seven. Um, this is a fantastic adventure. And again, it's based on kind of like, and it's for free, um, which you get on drive through. And it, it's based on that fairy-esque vibe of, um, people that were kind of killed a long time ago. And it's got some history. I would definitely get this first, well, before you start reading and read this, because this is all stuff that you can start to seed into your, your campaign. And I think this one is levels, I think, four to six or something like that um so between this which will take you one to three and that and throwing a few other things in the middle and i'll show you where you can get them stuff in another video um you could run an entire kind of foresty based campaign for free uh which is amazing um so that is a foresty type campaign let me jump back to the map okay um next classic uh let me throw that down keep on the borderlands you can buy Keep on the Borderlands for $4.99, on, um, yeah, on drive through for the PDF, personally, or, or you can spend more and get the color book, but like, I, I wouldn't do that if I was running it, I would be printing the PDF and making marks on the PDF, but if you don't want to buy Keep on the Borderlands, um, you can grab this which is the Caves of Chaos. And it's another basic fantasy module, and it's been heavily inspired by the Keeps on the Borderland. You could throw that in a few different places. Um, you could throw it over here somewhere where you have kind of like these hills um, with potentials of kind of like you've got the, um, uh, the, the orcs that are fighting each other and that side of stuff. You could run it from if you are coming from the Viking kind of area to give it your campaign a bit of a different feel, or you could come and run it coming from here. Um, it would just sit in there easily. All you need to do is create the village or hijack one of these villages that are around there, like Ethan Field, uh, uh, and you're good to go. You have the starting of a campaign there that will take you from levels one to three, probably levels one to four if you, uh, if you took time with it. And again, with all of this stuff, I'd be suggesting that you just sprinkle other adventures in, which again will be another episode to show you where you can get an unlimited amount of them for free. So that would give you your classic kind of keep-esque campaign. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Black Wimmer Bransford. Um, again, this is something I printed out. You can get this for $4.99. It's a really sweet kind of cool adventure. Um, it has a little town, a village. It's $4.99. That would tie in in and around that fairy-esque kind of forest vibe. Uh, Tomb of the Serpent Kings. This is free. This is probably the best introducing your players to the old school style of play. 
it's by Skirples, and I'm probably going to do links below to all of this stuff. But I will do links below to all this stuff. This is a great little adventure, and you can get it for free online. Um, it is kind of like a um, there's an old tomb that's kind of been discovered, and you go there, and there's fungal goblins and um, just some cool, cool stuff in there. But it's a real, real learning module, which is great. Uh, if we go down to the bottom here, right, you could run it around the bottom here around Castle Blackmarsh. You could run an entirely different style of campaign because it feels to me like there's almost more politics going on here. You've got the people from Jorvich who um, supported the old big bad, um, who was part of Castle Blackmarsh. You've got a keep here. And what I would probably do is take that keep and I would just insert Morgan's Fort, which is a game basic fantasy. Um, you've got a keep in here, which you could literally just replace in Accuous keep, in Accuous? Yeah, but it, that keep there with this. Um, and see the adventures and other ones in and around there. You are good to go. Build in the politics of wanting to get rid of the elves from Castle Black Marsh. And this wouldn't just be a campaign like that that you would like this that you would run. This would be the starting of something really cool that you, if your players were interested in that kind of vibe, they could get involved with the interplay between the old uh, supporters of the big bad, the current elves that want to keep control of Castle Black Marsh and the uh, the humans who used to have control and would really kind of want it back so that is a great little adventure and a set of adventures that you could throw in and around there just down here underneath uh there's an uh, old monastery you could replace that with full crest abbey full crest abbey is currently one dollar on um on drive through and it is again a really good little dungeon that you could run and this is kind of the idea there's so many different ideas in and around here of just adventures that you could drop in now in the course of these last few minutes i've given you like three options of starting places for campaigns for different styles of campaigns there's other stuff that i'd probably be doing as well within this setting there's mentions of hill giants there's mentions of um kind of mountain giants as well so then you've got saga of the giants a game from basic fantasy that you can start seeding this is a much later campaign kind of like nine to twelve levels or levels 9 to 12 uh, campaign but you can start seeding ideas and rumors of that and see if your players pick up on it for later on in the game so theoretically we've kind of got stuff that would take you almost all the way through i'm going to throw a couple of well i'm going to throw you something else in there which is something that i love and i think would sit in here perfectly as well stonehill um i've got both of them here stone hell for me is my favorite ever mega dungeon i adore it i love the layout i love the set out and it is a bargain it is currently stone hell seven pound 44 for the first book and there's two books it's like 10 levels of 300 or odd probably no probably 150 to 200 rooms per level it's ridiculous in size and it's based on an old uh essentially an old jail that's now been abandoned but the people are still living in the jail you could easily take stone hell and stick it somewhere around here which would be really interesting and you've now got a huge amount of stuff that you could have interplay with the people from castle black marsh them wanting you to go to stone hell to start to pull out some of the stuff that's there now with stone hell one of the things it has is a green dragon you could just report it's a, a a marsh dragon i can't remember the color but you could just replace the dragons here with that, um, within Stonehell, there are um, hobgoblins looking to attack. You can add that kind of tension to here and bring in the Black Marsh Rangers, and it would be really, really cool. But I probably wouldn't do that. I would do something really different. I, I would take Stonehell, and I would put it actually inside Castle Black Marsh. The dungeons below Castle Black Marsh haven't been discovered. I would simply replace them with Stone Hell. Stone Hell is modular, so you can actually take out the bits that don't fit, like the hobgoblins. But you could have this become the dungeons underneath the castle. Um, and because of the nature of Stone Hell, and I'm, I might do another, an actual complete episode on Stone Hell alone. But because of that, you would now have an entire town campaign that you can almost interact with or you could bring that into the one with um the keep that uh in in that area as well but it would mean that you have an entire fully fleshed out dungeon 
that you can then start to flavor that entire area. Now, this is, I'm guessing, 10 minutes or however long we've been going for. And I've just given you kind of literally just by going across to my shelf and pulling out a bunch of settings or a bunch of adventures, most of which are free or like ridiculous value that you can just literally just drop in here. And that's the nature of this setting because this setting is so light, it allows you to take stuff, bend it a little and throw things in. You could play with the stuff that I've dropped down here for, for literally years for free. Um, and all you would need to do is sprinkle in some more little um, small one shotted adventures. And I'll show you how to get that in the next, probably in the next video. Um, and you are good to go. You, you don't have to overthink running a game. You can just grab some stuff, get something that kind of you vibe with, throw it in here and off you go. Um, so yeah, I, I hope this has went some way to, to taking out some of the the worry about where do I get started from. The, the truth is, running running the game, for me, running the game is the best part of the game. Old Source makes it crazy easy to run a game, really easy to adapt any of this stuff. Um, you've got the other adventures that I shared for free at the start. Any of them you can use if you prefer any of those. This isn't to say you have to run uh, Old Source. This setting is a basic setting that you can use and you can just run with, or you can take and you can take inspiration with, or you can create your own setting. But you don't need huge amounts to run. This is all 24 pages, this setting that we've been going through. And then you can just take, feel the kind of vibe you want, take a couple of settings, don't overthink things, read them through, throw them in there, and then just get up and running. And it is as easy and as cheap as that. You don't have to buy a core book and a monster manual and a DM's guide and, you know, an adventure that's going to take you linearly through from le level one through to level 20 or whatever it is. And you have to do this X, Y, and Z. You can have something here that is just open. that Your players get to decide what they vibe on and you can run with it and have that flexibility to have fun and be part of your game. And I think that's kind of, well, for me, it's the, the big attraction to a more old school style of gaming. So, Hope you've enjoyed this. And if there's any adventures that you like that I haven't shared because there's bundles of them, put them below in the comments. That would actually be awesome. Any stuff that you think is great for this style of play, but also not crazy in money, not so, that isn't going to break the bank or free. Um, and if you put them there, anybody who sees this video at some point in the future might be able to use that as a resource to then make their games a little bit more epic, which is kind of cool. So um, thank you. And I will see you in the next one.